cheating rumors uh, you always 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 need evidence so um, you know like yeah it sets you off but you got to get the proof you can't bring anything up until you have the proof because a liar is going to deny it if you don't have concrete proof they're going to deny it boyfriend gets upset if I ask to see his Instagram likes why is he upset? Why is he upset? Why does that upset him? Hello, my loves. Do we have any newbies here? By the way, we just got started, you guys. Um, once things get really started, we get a lot of questions. I do Q and A's. Hello, lovely. Hello, Miss Queen. Uh, we get the Q and A's rolling, so it tends to start getting pretty rapid fire. Thoughts on how long to wait after leaving a relationship before getting into a new one? It doesn't matter how long you wait. What matters is the method you use to date. If you wait 10 years and then you do the kiss to see where it goes, in essence, getting into a relationship with a stranger and hoping for the best, you can end up in another disastrous relationship. You can start dating right away using no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months dating rule and get into the right relationship within four months. So it's, you know, it really doesn't matter how long you date. What matters is how you vet for the right person. Um, if you're getting back out into the dating scene, do you grab no more assholes? This is the book that teaches you how to vet and find the right partner. Hello, hi from Texas. Oh, must be hot down there. Hot down there. Uh, tips on long distance. I have a free guide for you. You can find it in the link tree in my bio. Go get that download. I have to ask my boyfriend about and he says he hasn't he's coming back there's no proof um that's just that you don't even bring it up until you have proof no kissing that's right why no kissing uh because i don't know about you but if i'm looking for a partner like if i'm just in play mode i'll i'll kiss five guys in a night i don't care if i am looking for a partner the person i kiss um i commit to right like i inadvertently commit to them because if i go out with somebody first second third day and i kiss them and then the next day somebody says can i take you out i say no i'm seeing someone so that kiss basically committed me to that person now if i don't know them yet because it's a fourth date i don't know them i basically committed to a stranger and i'm looking for my future husband or baby daddy or whatever it is that you're looking for in a future partner if you want a long-term relationship by the way this is for long-term relationships if you just want to play go play it doesn't matter but for a long-term relationship as a dating coach i advise my clients actually know who the person is before they kiss and get into a relationship with them you're so smart about the kissing rule why you should do that it just it just makes sense right like because like right now the current dating culture like the way to find a relationship is kiss to see where it goes it makes zero sense you waste so much time um and and i mean guys get what they want when they want it right because we have this sense of fear oh if we don't kiss by the fourth date they're gonna think we're not interested they're gonna move on we're gonna lose an opportunity to get into a relationship and this is a subconscious programming that's been brainwashed into us and we need to undo that because it doesn't benefit women at all it, it really doesn't even benefit men because people come together and yeah they have a great honeymoon period and then make each other miserable for a year or two before realizing Fuck, you know we, we gotta get out of this like this doesn't make any sense all we do is fight because we just don't have the same fundamental values and and you know we don't have the same goals we don't have the same timelines we don't have the same levels of ambition 
we don't want the same things, you know? So, uh, well, we got to break up and you just wasted two years of time. Um, so it just, it just makes so much more sense. You're so much more efficient when you see where it goes and then kiss the right one because yes, the wrong one will walk away when they don't get what they want when they want it. And that's what you want. You want the one who doesn't respect you to walk away. You want the one who doesn't care about you to walk away. You want the one who's only into it for what they could get, not what they can contribute to walk away. You want the lazy ones to walk away. You want the one that lacks impulse control to walk away. You want the one who's controlling to walk away, right? So it really, you know, creates uh, an environment where the wrong one is like, I'm out of here. And you're like, adios, amigos, <laughs> right? And like, woohoo, thank God I didn't kiss that one. So it's it's so beneficial to use it. And men are, men, right? Guys don't like this. Guys are selfish short-term thinkers. Men are generous long-term thinkers. Men love this. Um, listen, men are smart. Men, like, those of you who are like, oh, you know, like it's been six months, it's, it's like, like he, he doesn't know if he wants a relationship yet. I was like, yeah, girl. Um, there's a couple reasons for that. One, it actually does take time for men to fall for you. It's not the physicality that's going to make them fall for you because they're seed planters. They have a 24-7 fertility cycle. They're designed to just plant it and move on. Um, but there's, when it comes to choosing a partner, it's a selection that takes place up here, not because they're doing something with their physical body, but because there's an alignment like, yeah, this is the one for me. But that doesn't happen because they're having sex. It happens because they get to know you. And when you are kissing and having sex, it literally takes them longer to get to know you because your mouths are preoccupied. So if you do no kissing and no sex for three months, then the mouths are not preoccupied, not true, right? Like, like as though when you're kissing and having sex, you're having conversations at the same time, right? Right, is that what you're saying? When, when you like, that's not true. As though when you're kissing and having sex, you're having a conversation at the same time. Please, please tell me that happens, right? So it does take them longer to get to know you because you are preoccupied with the kissing and the sex. And you need to have the no sleepovers because you'll go through a day with them and there'll be a red flag, but then it'll be overcome by the next moment. So you send them away at the end of the day. You have to go now. It doesn't matter if he's at your house at two o'clock in the morning watching a movie, you guys are all snuggled under a blanket and feeling good. Uh-uh, you have to go now. Oh, but it's late. You have to go now. Oh, I had some drinks. Let's call you an Uber, but you have to go now. No kissing, no sleepovers. You have to go. You have to give me my space because I want to think about that day after the day is done. And that red flag that was covered over by the next moment is now going to come to light. And I need to examine it. I need to weigh you. A woman can definitely be smarter with those rules. I wouldn't be with the man I'm with today if I hadn't used that rule three times. Only if they're honest conversations and not mirroring. Here's the thing, time will tell. Anybody can say anything, right? Anybody can say what you want to hear, but over time, you will see if the words match the reality. And that's why you need the time. You need to know who they are. You need to know if they're consistent. Open up to my partner about something I'm struggling with. His first response was, I do my weakness. Do you believe that the retrograde negativity affects relationships? I don't study it, so I really don't have an opinion on that. What you just said is so right. Yes, my love. Yeah. Uh, how fast can someone fall in love? It, it, it's, it's all up in the air. There's no time frame. Uh, those of you who want to understand how to date properly, by the way, No More Assholes is the book that's going to teach you how to date efficiently. Stop. Uh, don't hit on me, by the way. I will kick you out. That's not what I'm here for. Um, don't think that I don't know what that is, just so you know. Uh, so... For my ladies, no more assholes. This is going to teach you how to, ch how to choose the right man, a generous long-term thinker. For my men, uh, the perfect play. This is going to teach you how to choose the right woman, a generous long-term thinker. 
Do, do, do. Seriously. Yeah, I might just have to kick you out. Might just have to kick you out. What's your advice for males? What's the question for males? I will, I, like, seriously, I do teach you men how to use a no kissing for three months dating rolling hair. I teach you why you don't like it. I teach you why you don't want to do it. I teach you why it's beneficial to you. I teach you how it keeps you from getting used. I teach you how to help you avoid selfish short-term thinking girls so that you end up with a generous long-term thinking woman. Tips for waiting through the muck on apps. Don't, uh, don't reply to people who don't make it obvious that they've read your, your bio. If they're not reading the words that you put there, they don't care who you are. They're just looking at pictures. Advice for breaking up with a narcissistic partner is just get it done. Get it done. Get your plan. Get it done. If you need help with the plan, come get a coaching session. If a man would kiss me for three months, I think he wasn't playing for my team. So here's the thing. Uh, there's a difference between men and guys. Men are generous long-term thinkers. Guys are selfish short-term thinkers. Um, you know, the, the way that you do this is you don't do it without communicating. You communicate that you want to get in a serious long-term committed relationship. You're serious about choosing the right partner. So you're going to know who someone is before you kiss and commit to them. So my love, if you want to kiss someone you don't know and hope for the best, you have every right to do that. But I teach my people how to understand who someone is and not play the hoping game. What to do when you feel worse after, um, and by the way, no kissing doesn't mean no affection, but you know, kissing, you know, at the first, second or fourth date, uh, that's, that's coercion. That's fear-based. You do it because you're afraid of an opportunity. You do it because you're afraid of losing somebody, right? Like, oh, if he doesn't kiss me by the fourth date, I'm going to be, I'm going to be afraid is because he's not attracted to me. So you're going to plant that kiss to get the attraction going, get the heat going instead of actually having it happen on a genuine level you're going to get that sexuality in to get it going and by the way the chemicals in a kiss are an aphrodisiac this is why kissing precedes sex so you're gonna you're gonna get a chemical in there that's gonna make them feel hot for you and that's gonna be your validation is, is he doesn't like me because he knows who i am he likes me because i made him horny right and so does does is that what you want you want to get into a relationship where you're seen as a piece instead of a human and and then you're you're gonna wonder why you guys fight because you know once the chemical dies down which it does after a while you know we're not hot and heavy forever um so once that chemical settles down uh are they are they gonna appreciate you or are they gonna be like mm, next piece of tail next hot i mean i'm here for the hot i'm here for the hot i'm here for the exciting i'm not here because I'm looking for someone. I'm, look, I'm looking for that right person. I'm here because I'm looking for a body. I got a body and that was fun, that was exciting, that was new, but it's not new and exciting anymore, so let me go find the next new and exciting body. That's the one, that's the one that you're scared of losing if you don't get that kiss in. <laughs> I really fixed that shit and it worked, but I've been feeling really insecure recently. Is this normal? So you're just cycling, that's all. So do your work, do your meditation, write a cheat sheet on your partner. Don't go to them for reassurance. They've already said it. Write down everything they say and do to prove to you that they love you and are devoted to you. And when you go into your insecurity mode, which kind of feels like amnesia because that's all the stuff you forgot, go back and read all that stuff and self-soothe and, and you know pump yourself up. Learn how to regain your confidence when you slip into insecurity if you need help with that come get a coaching session that's how men are how how are men how are men men have short attention spans no they don't guys have short attention spans men have long attention spans men are generous long-term thinkers when you're tired of playing with guys come use my advice because guys don't like me they literally don't. Uh, they don't because I get in their way because their tricks don't work on my women. My women are too smart to fall for fear. My women are too smart to fall for coercion. My women are too smart to kiss a stranger and hope for the best. And that's the trick that guys want to plant on you. 
because the chemical in the kiss, being an aphrodisiac, an amphetamine, an antidepressant, makes you feel really good about him. And you tell yourself, you create a story, my love. You tell yourself, I feel this good because he's this great. No, you don't. You feel that good because you did heroin. And you're looking at him through heroin eyes going, wow, you are so magical. Uh-uh, it's the chemicals. Everybody's lips secrets a chemical that doesn't do anything to them till it comes in contact with another set of lips. The combination is phenylethylamine, aphrodisiac, amphetamine, antidepressants. If you don't want to fool yourself, then don't kiss somebody you don't know because you will fool yourself because you're gonna go into this massive honeymoon stage. You're gonna think he's so amazing and so perfect. Um, create all kinds of stories in your head about who he is, fill in all kinds of gaps, overlook all the red flags, and then waste two years. Cycling means everything Everything is patterns, right? So if you do something often enough, it's a pattern. So as you work through your issues, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like two steps forward, one step back. You keep cycling back, but if, as long as you keep working, you do start to evolve past the pattern and create a new pattern. Is it a bad sign my boyfriend says he doesn't think men and women can be friends? Uh, well, I mean, it, it means he only views us as bodies to slam. That's what he's saying. He's saying, so literally what you're saying is you only view us as bodies to slam because you can't conceptualize the notion that we can actually be platonic. Do, 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 do. I always learn something new when I hang out on your lives. Thank you, lovely. My boyfriend says I come after him and his goals. Should I be worried that he's not serious about me? So here's the thing. You do come after work. You do come after work. Work is what pays the bills. Uh, goals is being ambitious with what is gonna pay the bills. Am I gonna pay the bills with this much or am I gonna pay the bills with this much? Well, I'd rather pay the bills with this much because frankly, that gives me more money to save today, which gives me the opportunity to retire earlier down the road when my body is more aged, has less energy, and is less strong. So that is a smart thing to say. Uh, I would never get between my husband and what he wants to do, his ambition, his goals. I respect and I love him too much. I wouldn't do that. So, you know, he's being honest and realistic. And I don't disagree with him because your goals should come before your relationship because you should choose a partner who supports your goals and would never get in the way of your goals. Uh, now, the question is, is he planning on living with you? Is he planning on building a life with you? Is he planning on making you the beneficiary of his ambition and hard work and dedication to his ambition and hard work? Will he be making a better life with you? Will he be sharing the fruits of his labors? So this, this is not a bad partner to be with, um, but if you're selfish, don't be with an ambitious man because you need to be sacrificing alongside them. They're sacrificing time with you today for more time with you tomorrow when they're older and not as strong. So you need to be able to sacrifice alongside. Oh, he's blocked. You're amazing, thank you. What to do if a guy matches with me and my friend on a dating app, but he doesn't know we're friends? You and your friend can negotiate who's gonna have access to him. Oh, Dating 101 arrived today, love it. Did you start reading it yet? Asked my boyfriend many times to write me a love letter and he said he will but hasn't. What should I do? So if you Google um, how to write a love letter for men, there's a like man-to-man -man website that actually breaks down what to write from one paragraph to the next for men to literally guide them on how to write a love letter. So um, I don't know what the link is, but it's, it's pretty easy to find, you know, Google search, how to write a love letter for men. And it's like, it's, it's this manly page. 
Um, so go find that and send them the link. Um, but here's the thing, I really suggest you do a love language quiz because your love language might be words of affirmation, his might not be. So that might also be part of the difficulty. Today I told my ex I'm moving out. He seems sad and I am sad. Just get it done. Get it done. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say I do. Yes, love languages. Love languages. Uh, what does it mean if he does not propose after six years but keeps saying he'll propose soon? Tell him what your timeline is. And say, I need to be in a relationship with somebody who shares my goals and timelines. And if, if that's not you, that's okay. I do. Okay. Those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here. Once or twice, you're going to get a pop-up. And the pop-up is a bell. While you're doing that, does somebody want me to do a book walkthrough? Anybody want, to, want me to give you a short description of what each of my books are about? How do we get these men to get off, off texting? Thank you. Uh, should, if a guy lives two hours away, should he come near or take turns? It's a courtesy to take turns. I've uncovered my husband in tons of lies. He tells me it's all out now. How can I trust him again? That's a good question. I don't know, my love. I don't know. I don't know what the lies are. Uh, is there every ever a time where you stop working on the relationship and everything is just consistent? Yes. Uh, yeah. Abby and I are there. So we fought for 10 years. We've been together for 15 years. We fought for 10 years. We haven't had a single fight in five years. Fix that shit is how we did it. Um, if you are with a generous long-term thinker who loves you, this is the book that will change it all for you. So if you want to get to a place where it's just easy, graphic session. I always show interest in my boyfriend's day in life, but when I tell him he doesn't always do the same. So are you showing interest because you're interested or are you showing interest because you are manipulating him? In other words, you are doing something to get it back, which is not a gift. So if it's a gift, then you do it and you release the outcome and you have no negative feelings if it doesn't return, right? Because it's a gift. Uh, if you are manipulating him, it means you do it and then you wait for the outcome and then you get disappointed when you don't get that return. So the next time you're about to do something, anything, I want you to ask yourself, will I be disappointed if that gesture doesn't come back to me? If the answer is yes, then don't do it because you were about to do a manipulation. I love that you keep it real. He's just not a good listener, okay? Uh, so are you with somebody who's a selfish short-term thinker? Is that the problem? Do you need to change relationships? Do you need to grab no more assholes so you can better understand if you're with a generous long-term thinker or a selfish short-term thinker? Uh, did you and your husband do the three month no kissing rule? We actually did a two and something year no kissing rule. We did it by accident. So we really did get to know each other for a long time before we got into a relationship. Uh, while we were doing our 10 years of fighting, there was a few times that we broke up. I dated other people during those times but I incorporated a no kissing for three months dating rule, which each of those people that I dated, and he won me back before I kissed either of them. I would have kissed both of them because they were amazing. There was nothing to hold me back from that, except for the time frame. But he ended up winning me back before we hit that three month anniversary. If your boyfriend is interested in you when they want to know about your day, ask how things are, why do you need prompting? Like if there's something interesting to talk about, then talk about it. If you're waiting for prompting, the question is why? Like if you have some news to share and and you and a friend calls you, um, do you wait for them to say what's new before you, or are you like, hey, guess what, this just happened? 
right? So why are we really getting so micromanaging with the behavior with our partners? Why do we set them up for so many failures by having all these little tests that they need to achieve? If you don't ask how my day is, you don't care, right? And so in, instead of having that dialogue in your head, ask yourself, how do they show they care? Is it evident in other behaviors? If no, just asking how your day is isn't a show of caring, right? If they're neglectful in other ways, then just asking how your day is is not a show of caring. Um, if they are caring in other ways, why are you setting up a test in order to, to, to see how much they care, right? It's, it's like you're ignoring what they're doing to show that they care and then treating them as a failure for not doing this behavior. said stop the little test and just ask right and just just tell them if there's something new exciting interesting um tell them if you're waiting for them to ask how your day was just so you can say nothing happened well you know why are you doing that why are you putting this strain this stress this pressure on your relationship If you can't get over your last relationship, if you're having problems getting over your ex, Greg, come back queen. This is the book that's gonna walk you through the process of putting your heart back together and looking forward instead of looking backward. Is it bad to invite yourself to stuff your boyfriend goes to sometimes? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. And you know, oh, you're gonna do that? Can I go with you? That sounds like fun. What's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Hi from Scotland. No, probably not. I don't, I don't think you could pay me enough to go to Edinburgh and teach you a thing or two. I don't, I don't think you have the budget for it. Sorry. I'm sorry. So, oh, did we want a book walkthrough? Did I see a request for a book walkthrough? I like a guy, we're talking a little, should I write him or wait for him to write me? Uh, so here's the thing, don't wait on anybody, right? Like, like why are you waiting for somebody to show up for you? Why are you waiting for somebody to show consistency and interest? Um, like, like you, you, should I wait for him? No, you should be talking to five guys right now. You should be talking to five different people right now. Because if you're looking for a committed long-term relationship, you're looking for the diamond in the rough. You're looking for quality, not quantity. But you have to get through the quantity to find the quality because it's called the law of averages. The more people you talk to, the more likely you are to get to the right person, but you have to get through the wrong people to get to the right person. So if you're just talking to one person and waiting for that one person to show interest, you're wasting your time. You're wasting precious time. If, am I overreacting if my friends with benefit goes to me after we were supposed to meet, but later came back? It's a friends with benefit, my love. You're just a body right? Like, I don't know why you're emotionally hooked on the behaviors that your friends with benef with benefit is doing. They don't want a relationship. That's why they're doing a friends with benefits. They just want to use you until they're done and want to move on. But you're not the relationship person. So you being hooked on their behaviors and uh, riding an emotional roller coaster based on how they respond to you is you getting in your own way. You're hurting yourself by choosing this relationship and then choosing this. And by the way, I have nothing against friends with benefits, but if you're gonna start getting feelings for your friends with benefits, what you actually want is a relationship. So if you're wanting a relationship from the person who just wants your body, this is your mistake to rectify. You need to walk away from the person who doesn't want a relationship and be available for the person who does want a relationship. So whether he ghosted you and came in and came out, it's irrelevant. You are a friends with benefits. You are a body for him. That's why he doesn't care what he does or doesn't do. It's just, you know, hey, I hope she sticks around for as long as I want to do her for. You 
You're amazing. I want to read your book. Oh no, only outdoor seatings. Right, 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 right. We literally just broke up. Which book should I read? Come back queen if your heart is hurting. If you're kind of ready to get back out there, because listen, you know, just because you broke up today doesn't mean the relationship wasn't over already. Um, sometimes we stay together longer than we should. So if you're ready to bounce back out there, then No More Assholes is the book that's going to help you make sure you choose the right person next time. I can't help you. Pregnant, dating for four months, keeping it help and get some couples coaching. Get some couples coaching, love. Boyfriend wants to fix things. I don't and I want to gain my independence, but he's so attached to me. What should I do? You do what you want, right? Do what you want. Don't do what he wants do what you want what do you want this you literally need to grab a piece of paper and write what do i want and write down what you said here i want my independence and then make your behaviors match your intent uh so for those of you who want a book walkthrough i'm going to do a really quick um description of each of my books i got nine I got none, you know, cause, cause I'm crazy that way. So we just got custom made. Uh, okay, so uh, Come Back Clean is a book that's gonna help you get over a breakup. If you're feeling bad, heartbroken, hung up on your last relationship, doesn't matter how far back it was. Um, Come Back Clean is gonna help you through that. Then you grab No More Assholes. My ladies, this is the book that's going to help you make sure you choose a generous long-term thinker, no more selfish short-term thinkers. Uh, my men, I got your version right here. It's called The Perfect Play. This is the book that's going to help you make sure you choose a woman, not a girl. So a generous long-term thinker, not a selfish short-term thinker. No users, no takers, you guys, no more. Uh, after the first kiss, ladies, back at you. This is a book that's going to help you solidify that relationship, get the best out of your partner, transition from courtship to reality phase without going into an insecurity phase. Uh, Face That Shit is a book that is going to help you navigate fights in your relationship, get them to zero. This is a book that's going to get all the conflict out of your relationship if you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. And um, uh, if you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you and you do what's in here, Unblock Levi Washington exclamation mark exclamation mark. Is that three or is that four exclamation marks? How come why? Give me a good reason uh, Custom made is the book that goes really well fix that shit if you are codependent if you're making your partner your purpose and Not making your purpose your purpose because you don't even know what your purpose is and that's why you make your partner your purpose This book is going to answer two questions. What is my purpose my talent and how can I monetize it? So in essence, um, get paid doing what you love. Uh, Dating 101, you, you guys, this is a textbook. There's no swearing in here. Um, perfect for teenagers, also perfect for nerds, understanding the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love. Fake love need not apply, how to avoid posers, losers, scammers, and predators. This is a free book. If you hit the free book button in the link to my bio. And to round this all off, this is the book about life. This is the book that's gonna help make your life happier. So uh, men, say yes to goodness, custom made, dating 101. Uh, this is for me to whoever is reading it. The other relationship books, other than The Perfect Play, which I wrote specifically for men, all the other relationship books are me to the ladies. If you wanna read them, you will gain a lot from them anyways because you get an inside scoop on how we think. Um, also, you guys, you can get my books on Amazon. Pretty much anywhere you buy books online, but Amazon pays me a little bit more if you go through them. And if you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is an audiobook, but you can only get it through the link to my bio. I don't want to go live with Ben. 
Oh, he agrees with your takes, but disagreed with one of them. So I think he should. I don't know. He's it's, here's the thing, right? I don't think you understand what I understand about Levi. Guys, I am a behaviorist, right? Like you do understand I'm a behaviorist. You do understand I am a professional when it comes to assessing people. There's a reason why I blocked him. There's a reason why I just don't care to have him view my stuff. Um, you know, yeah, he agrees with me on some things. Yeah, there's a lot of people who agree with me on some things. It's the things that don't bug their ego. Um, so there's that, right? So there's that. It's, and, and I don't care. You can disagree on, uh, on anything you want. But he is misogynistic. And I'm just not interested in misogynistic people. And he targets me, and I'm not interested in being targeted by misogynistic people. So I, I, it's just it's just not interesting to me. Is he saying something again? Like, is there a reason why you're bringing this up? Because it's been a long time. Ben, talking to you. Uh, he isn't. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, that's why. That's why, lovely. I'm back! My mom calls in the middle of me watching your live. <laughs> oh, well. You guys are cute. You're being supportive of each other. Uh, what book would you suggest for teenagers? Dating 101 is a great place to start for teenagers. What do you do if you feel worse after opening up to your partner? Um, it. I don't know why, right? Like, is it because you had an expectation? Is it because you wanted comforting and you didn't know how to teach them to comfort you? Uh, what you can do is you can grab the associate, you can start doing what's in that book to help you understand how to better navigate relationshiping. My boyfriend and I have been together for one and a half years. He says he's feeling bored. What do I do? Tell him, get a second job. Get more ambitious. Do more with your life, you know? Uh, say a relationship isn't a source of entertainment. It's where you come with somebody that you get along with to build a life together because you like their companionship. And you want that person to share your ups and downs, to share your dreams and goals, to go through life with you. So if you're looking at this relationship as a form of entertainment, then I, I kind of, I don't know if you really have the right way of looking at things. Um, if you're just bored in life, then fill your life up some more. You know, get a hobby, turn it into something that's paying. I love when you put the guys in their place. <laughs> How do you know a marriage will be successful long term? Uh, you are with somebody who is mature. You are with somebody who has control over their emotions and behaviors. You're with somebody who is a generous contributor to the relationship and is not a scorekeeper. Um, you are with somebody who is understanding and patient, uh, who resists their impulses, who is mature and responsible. There are 12 character traits you need to look for in a partner. You will find them in No More Assholes. They need to score at least a 9 out of 12. They also need to practice the three Ps, which is protect, profess, provide. They need to be loyal and devoted and hardworking. And they need to make you laugh more than anybody else. What's the best response to use when my boyfriend points his finger at me when we argue? 
don't micromanage their behavior. So he's pointing a finger at you. Are you going to go into mom mode? And you're going to go, don't you dare point your finger at me, young man. Right? Like, so they point a finger at you. Um, I draw the line at calling me names. Right? I, I draw the line at, at stomping around and slamming things and throwing things and yelling. So, but, you know, you want to point a finger at me? Point your finger at me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to mother you. I'm not going to micromanage your behaviors, but I will be respected. I don't call you names because that's not what I want in this relationship. We don't call each other names. I'm not going to stay here if you're going to throw things around the room because I won't be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't control their behaviors and emotions. That was so helpful. Thank you. I think I found the right man. Good, my love. Uh, so the sense of being bored in a relationship actually stems from boredom in your everyday life. It, it's it's a misdirection of of what you think should be exciting you, right? Um, relationships should like yeah. Initially, it's very exciting because Mother Nature makes you that way so that you pair bond and and get together and procreate and make a baby. Um, but then that subsides. It's just like taking heroin. Like initially it's like, wow, this is the best thing ever. But then you, you have to keep doing more and more because your body adjusts to it. Uh, so it's, a, it's the same thing. Your body goes into a high and it, it, it feels very tingly and exciting and you sleep less, but you're not tired. But, but then you readjust again and you go back to normal. Um, so if you're bored, if you're looking at your relationship using that as a lightning rod, like I need to be excited and you're not exciting me. It's like, dude, I'm not here to excite you. If you want to be excited, excite yourself, get excited about your life, get excited about your purpose, your passion, something that you can do for people that benefits them, that they pay you for. And you're like, wow, look at this. Like that should be your source of excitement. I am your source of calm and stability. I am the safe place you come to after a hard day, but I'm not your entertainment. Should you be okay if your boyfriend likes pictures of women he knew like worked and went to school? I don't see what the problem is with that. That sounds platonic, right? That sounds platonic. It's okay to have platonic relationships. Makes sense. You're so welcome. Hey. Your book helped me out so much. Yeah? Which one did you read? What did you read, my love? Where are my readers at? All my readers say, here I am. All my readers say, hello. I feel like I won't meet my soulmate or possibly have and didn't know it. Uh, don't be afraid. Uh, how did you begin giving great relationship advice? I, people just started coming to me for it when I was in my 20s and I just haven't stopped. Um, experience, perspective, uh, what's the other word? Um, uh, channeling <laughs> honestly sometimes my mouth starts like moving and I don't know what I'm gonna say as I'm saying it it's like surprising me as much as anybody around me yes I'm in a very good relationship I've been with my man for 15 years um, we haven't had a fight in five years now we are quite happy we make out every single day we're very supportive of each other um, each other's dreams each other's goals um, he's amazing you know it, like he's he's so low-key right like this this guy is he's, he's so humble um doesn't care to be famous at all not for one second so his love for me means he actually shows up and does live streams with me but he wears a disguise um and the reason why he, he comes live is because i i do talk about him a lot and I talk about the things that i learn and uh, I say, hey, baby, like, like, show up with me so that people know you exist. 
And so he does. He does because he just really does love and support me that much. How is it realistic to never fight in a relationship when you resolve everything, right? So this might be hard for you to imagine right now, but when you get to a place where everything is resolved, then there's nothing to fight about. So all the past hurts have been resolved. Um, the present stuff that was popping up was resolved, was quickly resolved because you know, we, we, we had the tools to heal the past, we had the tools to deal with the present, and it's just easy now. So we can disagree about stuff and we respect each other's differences. We don't get into a fight about it. There literally is nothing left to fight about. I really wanna get over that specific someone, but it's so hard, so grab come back queen, my love. Right, no fighting means no conflict or disagreement. What do you think of a partner not wanting to be intimate or romantic with you? Um, I mean, it, it sounds like you're in a relationship with somebody who's not in a relationship with you. Uh, do I believe in God? I believe in energy. Um, I am God because I can create, I can manifest. Right? And isn't that what we call God is like a creator? Um, so we are all God in our own way. We can all create. We have powers that we haven't tapped into yet. Have you heard them? Have you heard that saying? Blasphemy. Only for you, my love. I don't share your religion. So I, I don't take I don't I don't take what you think personally about my thoughts. Um, and and so You've, you've heard the saying, we only use 20% of our brain, right? So there's 80% of our capabilities that we haven't tapped into. And, and we have amazing manifestation capabilities. We have amazing creative capabilities. So you're going to start feeling really fucking good when you start tapping into your brain and really start recreating your brain structure so that you start using what you should be using. Yeah, yes, yes we do. Yes we do. Uh, how would you take it if you went on a first date with somebody and he kept going on his phone? I would take it that he really was, wasn't that interested in getting to know me. Do -do. All right, y'all, I'm gonna dump the motherfucker. Are you? Are you, are you? <laughs> so somebody says, I'm not really Christian, but that I am God triggered me a little, right? Isn't it taboo to say that? Like, isn't it so taboo to, to own your energy, your power, your abilities, your capabilities, fuck taboo. Fuck that. I own myself. I own what I can do. I own my creative power. And we all should do that. None of us should be afraid of saying, I stand in my power. None of us should be afraid to do that. Do Are you planning to write more books? Yes, I'm writing Fix That Shit for Men right now. Yep, writing Fix That Shit for Men right now. I blocked them. Uh, what does they're not looking for a relationship but not against it mean? It means you should be using a no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months dating rule. Um, and not just focusing on them, but giving other people an opportunity to show you who they are and potentially show you that they're the right person for you. So you don't believe in an afterlife? Uh, so I am a social scientist and I believe in what I've experienced. And what I haven't experienced is, right? Like that's, 
I don't know. Um, so, uh, I don't know because I haven't been. Um, so personally, I can't say if there is or not, but I do believe in energy. We are energy. I can certainly manipulate my own energy. Um, I can use my energy to create uh, things that happen in my life. So there's no reason for me to not believe that I will re-manifest in another form at s somewhere, right? There's no reason for me to not believe that. This is a manifestation. There's no reason to believe this is the only manifestation I will ever experience. Um, how those other manifestations will take place, I do not know. Um, all I know is right now I am in a physical body and it's meant to be enjoyed. Hinduism is very much along the same train of thoughts. Exactly. 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 I studied several religions, by the way, just to help you guys understand how I came to where I am. Uh, Hinduism, uh, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity. Uh, and, um, you know, I actually had the experience of going into a meditative state. And there's not a big difference between prayer and meditation. But I went into a meditative state. I brought some other person's energy into my consciousness. I could feel their energy push back against my hands. And I knew something about them that I could never know because I never met them. This was a stranger in another city. All I knew about them was their age, um, their name, what city they were in. As I was touching their energy, I got to one of their legs and their energy was a vacuum. There was nothing there. And I said to the person who uh, gave me the name, the age, and the city, I said, he's an amputee. And they said, are you sure? I said, yes. He said, take a look. And they showed me. And sure enough, this person was an amputee. So, love you, crystals. Yes. Got a nice little selenite tower right there. Um, you know, so I believe in spirituality because I've had physical experiences delving into spirituality and energy and understanding how our energy can connect without even saying a word to each other, without even being in the same room. Guys, a lot of you have experienced this. When you think about a friend and a minute later you get a text message, this is your energy connecting. What's my take on distance relationships? It's a choice. You're more than just our brain and body. 100%. Yes. 100%. Um, if you guys are experiencing a long distance relationship, I do have a free guide for you to download in the link tree in my bio. Happens a lot with me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we agreed to meet up, and then the day came. He didn't mention anything about it. Thoughts? So you didn't confirm with him beforehand? Uh, I'm a spiritual social scientist, too. We are the best. We are the best because it's, it's such a great rounding, right? Um, when you can add spirituality to social sciences, because when you understand social science as well, you understand that we can reshape ourselves. We can form ourselves. We don't need to be purely a product of our upbringing. Um, we can change our brain structure. We can change our DNA code. Um, and spirituality helps you achieve that because meditation helps you calm the brain and change your brain structure, which helps calm your emotions, which helps change your gene code. Love can be difficult, but it shouldn't be traumatic. Yes. I asked him to set a time as your book said, but he didn't say anything. So don't just be talking to this person, right? Like guys, don't set yourself up for disappointment by putting all your hopes on one person and then being disappointed when they don't pull through. I want you to say to yourself irrelevant when somebody doesn't pull through for you because there are other, you're, you're not just hung up on one person. You're talking to this one, you're talking to that one, you're talking to this one. Oh, this, this, like this one doesn't even set up a time, doesn't care to show up. Irrelevant. They are irrelevant. If you don't want to be a part of the process of growing with me and creating something with me, you are irrelevant. Which book do I recommend for teens? Dating 101. What I do if he's toxic towards me? Why would you want to be with somebody who's toxic towards you?
Do you ever get trolls on here? I do, but I have good moderators. It says something about him having girlfriends and he said my relationship with them is none uh, okay so first of all if your partner has friends that they don't introduce you to uh, especially if they're in the gender that they're interested in they are ego strokes those people are ego strokes um, so that is a dump the motherfucker that's a dump the motherfucker. Uh, I said something about him having girlfriends and he said, my relationship with them is none of your business. Dump the motherfucker. I just ordered fix that shit after your last live, lovely. And he talks to them more than me. So that's his girlfriends. That's, that's his girlfriends. You're the side piece, my love. You're the side piece. He, he has to go. Get no more assholes. Get no more assholes. The fact that you thought this was okay, even Molly were willing to put up with this, is a massive red flag on you. You need to elevate your self esteem and your standards. Uh, just a quick thank you for allowing debate on your comments. Yes. Yeah. As long as you stay respectful, 100%. 100%. Um, somebody just got no more assholes. Uh, but, um, if you're going to be disrespectful, then you just, you just have to go. I don't, I don't suffer. Like I, I, I you know, I choose my environment, right? If you want to come into my environment and be disrespectful, off you go. I love you back. I'm kind of a jealous person, but I don't show up. So, and jealousy is normal, right? Like we will have those knee jerk reactions, um, but we manage our emotions. We manage our behaviors. I love you back. You're amazing. What advice to stop nagging a man or a slogan I can say, a uh, mantra or slogan I can say to remind myself. Um, I really do suggest you get fixed that shit. Um, don't know what it is that you're nagging about, but say I'm responsible for my own be my own emotions. I'm responsible for my own behaviors. I'm responsible for my feelings and solutions. Innocent friendships are not supposed to be secret. Exactly. Uh, what book would you recommend a teen for a teenage boy in college? I would say Dating 101. And, um, I would also say this one here, The Perfect Play. I don't have kids. My husband has two. Start to fix that shit. I'm so excited to start implementing everything I learned. That's what I like to hear. You're actually really helpful. Thank you. Fix that shit is a manual. Do what is in this book, my love. You will. It is. It's gonna be amazing. Amazing. Do do. My boyfriend normally tells you when he's talking to other girls. That's super awesome. Mm. Oh, I'm atheist. No religion, but believe in the power of our mind and energy. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a degree? Well, I have an award. Uh... A degree means you test well, an award means um, you are capable, right? So I actually have an award in life coaching. I didn't bother getting a degree because I was the one doing the hiring for, you know, the position of, uh, of coach in my company. And I knew how much I knew. I knew how capable I was. I didn't need a piece of paper to prove it to myself. Best tip on anxiety, start meditating. Meditation changes your brain structure. 
it shrinks your amygdala which is fight or flight which is stress fear and anxiety the sooner you start meditating the sooner you start shrinking your amygdala the sooner you start to reduce your capacity to feel those emotions the sooner you start to feel better um so i have a, a link in my bio it says free meditation guide hit that link up this is a starter page for getting started on meditation love you back uh i'm a mom and i find it so hard to meditate don't tell yourself what meditation is supposed to do all you or are supposed to be all you need to do is keep bringing your focus back to the music every time you realize you're off in thought guys everybody head over to my youtube channel um go to youtube type canada's dating coach you're going to find my channel go to my let's meditate playlist go to track number two listen to that twice a day with headphones been dating for almost three months how do i start a conversation about becoming exclusive first of all that should have been done before you started kissing um because you know you you like you're literally playing with fire here because you you could have been playing this whole time with somebody who had zero intention of starting a relationship um so now you're gonna say oh 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 so what is it that you're here for um so here's what you're gonna say hey i just want to let you know i'm done my playtime and i'm really looking for a committed long-term relationship because i want to get married and have kids and buy a house one day what about you and if they're not on the same page if they don't want what you want you say okay i understand i need to shut this down though because i really do want to get into that relationship and i don't want to be distracted by somebody who's not ready for what i want How do you know somebody's really serious with you? You use a no kissing for three months dating rule and they stay for three months. No kissing, no sex, no sleepovers, and they're not going anywhere. They're showing up. They're like they're happy to be around me. They're they're amazing. They they're consistent. They're generous. They're kind. They're thoughtful. That's how you know. When you use that no kissing for three months dating rule and they show up with consistency. And you like who they are. That's how you know they're serious. Uh, did the no kissing for six months. My boyfriend and I are still together after a year. Men do wait. Um... Uh, What do I do if me and a boy really like each other, but my parents don't want me to date? You gain your independence. Um, gain your independence. Because once you are out on your own and being an independent adult, you can make all your own decisions. Um, but if you are not an independent adult, if you are dependent on other people and uh, you know them maintaining you, then you are living in their house, which means you are following their rules. An award means you have the receipts. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Voted on by the people. Da -da. I'm not allowed to talk to guys, but he's always inviting females to our things. You're not allowed. Dump the motherfucker. Don't be in a relationship with somebody who parents you. Do not be in a relationship with somebody who parents you. You are an adult. Be an adult. And if somebody comes in your life and tries to have a parent-child relationship with you, dump the motherfucker. Uh, guys, it's late. It's time for me to go make some salsa guacamole. Salsa guacamole. Uh, I am going to let you go, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to set yourself up for a notification when I go live. So I'll click my picture up here. Once or twice, you're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you've done that, say, I just did. 
Uh, go into the link to my bio, you're gonna find lots of buttons in there. There's the coaching button if you wanna get a one-on-one, get some clarity, get a plan. Uh, there is uh, some freebies. You got a free long distance guide, you got a free book, um, free meditation guide, so pick your freebie. I just say guacamole, that sounds so good. Uh, what else are you gonna find in there? Oh, links to my YouTube channel and my podcast. Um, don't forget, you can get my books on Amazon. If you want an audiobook, it's just fix that shit right now. You can only get it through the link tree in my bio. Um, I will be back soon. You know I will because I don't stay away for long because we have so much fun here. Mwah! I love you guys. Have a good night. Make sure you get some good sleep. Mm-hmm.